Well, 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 we're back and we're talking about the markets again. Hello everybody, my name is Tojo, welcome to my Pokemon channel. If you are new here, it'd be great if you can consider doing all of the free stuff, the liking, the subscribing, but enough of that boring stuff. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be revisiting some topics that I addressed in the last couple of weeks. Those videos have done pretty well, really, for my channel. Um, a few hundred views might not seem a lot to some, but to me, it's been pretty good. So I'm going to be doing more of this stuff and following up on those videos and some of the points that were made over there. I'm going to try and do more of this kind of behind the scenes stuff that I keep away from the forefront of my channel. Um, aside from all the pack opening, gameplay, all that stuff, um, I do a lot of Pokemon kind of research and other things in my spare time so i'm going to bring more of this to the forefront and hopefully you guys enjoy it and you find it informative now i can't guarantee that i'll be revealing any of my secrets not that there really are any um but it does mean that i'd love to open more conversations and you know open the floor for more discussions around uh, the pokemon market buying and selling and investing in pokemon collectibles overall i'd love to have that on the channel and it's just good to hear from other people and see what their opinions are too so what did we cover last time well we had two videos we had one which was on the more common cards and the surge in price and hype around some of those cards on vintage sets and the other video was around the pokemon market bubble both of those videos can be found down in the description below i'll leave a link so please if you do have the time go and check those out because they'll add some more context to the stuff that i'm going to be covering today now, obviously, I wouldn't be here if we hadn't seen a change in some of the markets since the last time we spoke, and there has been some changes. So, the first thing that we're going to go and take a look at is the common card market. So, that's around the topics covered in the first video. So, a quick tip before I get into this stuff, I'm going to give you two websites that I use to commonly track all of this information and the websites that you're going to see in the video today. The first one is called PokemonPrice.com, which you'll have seen in the last video, and a new one that I'm introducing to the channel, which a lot of other people have been talking about, a relatively new player to the game, is uh, PokemonMarketCap.com, and it's a much more kind of in-depth, more investment, kind of traditional investing focused platform. Um, I'm going to give a quick switch over to that site there. I've got two screens, so sorry if I'm flicking between them. Um, but yeah, this is uh, PokemonMarketCap.com. Uh, it's an awesome site. You can see the change, uh, like I said, the set price change, um, the kind of, you can go in as deep as you want with this stuff. It's really, um, it's really, really in depth. As you can see, it's, it's modeled more around kind of the traditional uh, like statistics and kind of figures and numbers that you would track with traditional kind of stocks and shares so really good website but maybe a little bit too in depth for the stuff that i want to cover quickly and concisely in the video today so please go and check that out it's a really good site and but today we are going to be using pokemon price which is over here which is what you've seen on the channel before so you can go ahead and choose any of the sets and track the psa prices for these cards um so let's have a look at some common cards guys some of the ones that we spoke about in the last video so um, this is, uh, let's have a look. So, first one that we're going to be looking at is a Pikachu. First edition from the Jungle set. A card that's been soaring in price over the last few months. And one that is very, very, well, it's a common card, right? It's common. So, if you missed the last video, the whole point around that was that we were talking about how um, some cards have absolutely soared up in price, graded, raw, all that stuff, and people are rushing, rushing, rushing to get these graded off and sent to PSA and back in, you know, the hope that they'll make a lot of money from common cards, which is fair enough, I understand. Uh, these cards, I'm not saying they're not desirable, they are desirable. However, I was a little bit concerned around some of the prices that were flying about, and as you can see, so some of these charts we looked around last time, which was we were soaring up towards these numbers. Now you can see from the bottom here, um, I've done the traditional thing of filtering out those PSA 10s because, well, this one's actually got some pretty good data. There's some some nice um, consistent sales and, and good numbers here. But normally you want to try and have as many data points as possible. So that's going to be where basically where the pop report lies. So where the more cards lie. And so for this card, obviously we have tens and nines there's a there's a large number but then you also have to think about the number of sales too so 
those high number or that 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 more consistent uh, data or the more frequent data points are going to be found in the PSA 7 to 9 range. Sometimes you'll want to strip out the 7s, sometimes you'll want to include the 10s. Just see how it goes, but ideally what you're striving for here guys is the most uh, the, the largest number of data points. So we've got PSA 9s, 8s and 7s here. And as you can see from the last video, we looked around this peak point here. So we were looking up at a peak of $520 for this card. Um, now, I don't think we covered this card directly, but there were others too. But as we can see, the update that we have is uh, these cards are dropping. Um, and are they crashing? I don't know. They're dropping. They're, they're definitely dropping. So we can see the price is on a downward trend. Now, the important thing that we talked about in the last video was don't be blinded by one card. Don't, don't just look at one thing. The most important thing you can do is spread get out find as many cards as you can to get a bigger feel of the general ecosystem around cards so we're not just going to look at first edition jungle pikachu we'll also have a look at the eevee card from that set too which saw a massive rise in prices as well so there's actually not that much sales data around this card um that's up uh i think this is just like a, this is a classic example of a card where you just don't have enough data on to be able to tell what's going on um an alternative here would be check eBay last solds. However, not always. Uh, eBay sales aren't always the most reliable source for prices, and you also don't always know 100% that, that the cards have sold. So this is a bit of a bummer because I was hoping that we'd be able to see something in here, but we can't really. So I'm going to kind of leave this card out of it and just give this as an example. Think on my feet, <laughs> improvise a little bit, and say that. We don't have enough data here. So if you would see something like this, it's not enough of a gauge really for us to be able to do anything with. So let's move on to the base set. Shadowless starters. So this is just base set shadowless. This is not uh, first edition. This is just shadowless because, again, they're more common than, say, the first edition counterparts. And you'd likely to see more market movement on these. Um, they're more liquid. People have them. The population reports are higher. You're going to see more sales, more data. That's good. So let's strip out the 10s. And let's strip out the six, fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones, and hopefully we can see some data. Now here, we've got some horrible outliers, which is just like, just annoying. So I'm going to have to get rid of the uh, the nines on there. Well, well, actually, we can zoom in. Let's 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 zoom in. So let's go over here, and we can see here that we reached this peak, and then we came down again. So let's go for another one. I'll just get through these quickly, uh, and then if we go to Bulbasaur. We're in the same boat again where we reached this peak we were talking about and we're starting to come down again not that many data points here guys so that's not great uh charmander charmander is always a good one because everyone always wants the charmander to, to go with the charizard it's the next best thing right so let's just zoom in and uh what this what this chart is is essentially a, a price graph of kind of sales through to um is uh sorry the average sale price for a card in that grade um, for, a, for a given date. So this is pretty easy. Um, around the end of October, we're looking up at, for a PSA 10, up around about $900, and then we're slowly decreasing down to this $500 mark. Now the problem here is that this, this outlier here means that the scale of the graph isn't very great. There we go, that, that's, oh crap, what am I doing? There we go, that's, that's what I wanted. So this is fairly stable, to be fair. It's fairly stable, and then we come down. But where we're going to see some big movements, some really, really big movements, is um, in some other cards, so some uh, more, uh, some rarer cards. Um, so we've got a Yellow Cheeks Pikachu here, which we can see prices are coming down again. And then we've got um, the red, the infamous Red Cheeks uh, error print Pikachu, error print. Um, really common error print. Well, not really common error print. But this has a lot more data, a lot more sales for us to look at. I'm sorry if this feels like I'm rushing through. I'm trying to get through to the juicy stuff. But the common cards are dropping. We can see these peaks where we come up here, these PSA 10 values, and then we're slowly coming down. Now, we are only a week into this or a couple of weeks in, so it's not set in stone. But the point is, is that we're seeing these dips back down from these peaks. So when we were at the point where we were thinking, should we sell, should we buy? I was trying to maybe steer people away from looking at buying these more common cards because they were hoping that buying around here, oh, the price is, is, is only going to go up and I can grade. And then in two months time, if I pay express or in six months time, seven months time, if I don't pay express, they come back. 
I'm going to, it's going to be worth 2,000, 3,000, or even if it isn't, I only bought it for a hundred dollars. And, and if it comes back a 10, I can sell it at, you know, 12 X my investment, all this. And it's like, this is pretty much what I, what I expected to happen. And it's the reason why I sold some of my um, shadowless cards um, and my raw ones, because I just didn't think those prices were sustainable. And we're starting to see um, these dips. So I think the common cards are showing a, a picture that is a little bit harder to see. So let's push into where there's going to be more sales data and we're going to see more of this dip, more of this retrace. So let's go into some of the rarer cards. So if we look at, here we go, we, we're in some vintage stuff here now, guys. So we're back. And again, another important thing, don't just look at Charizard. Look at other cards, guys. You need to, you need to be looking at other cards to get a better sense. You know, if you look at just Charizard, you're blinded by the chase card of, of the hobby. Um, there's always going to be a much higher demand for that card, which means that maybe it might be a little bit more stable than others. And so it's important for you to, to spread your knowledge and find other cards and try and find trends elsewhere. So if we go ahead and have a look at um, this first edition hollow from uh, Jungle uh, for Snorlax, um, we can see again around, uh, you know, towards the end of October, we saw these price spikes here these peaks and again if we come over we're starting to see over the last couple of weeks these slow slow decrease in price uh, next card is oh, another jungle killer let's go for scyther scyther first edition hollow so we can see these peaks up here and we see a price dip down and then we're jumping up again again this is something here where we've not quite got enough data but we're starting to see this downward trend next card is uh, vaporeon from the same set and again, we're seeing this peak around the 19th or towards the end of October. Uh, and then we're starting to see these, these prices come right back down. And so it's a really violent increase and then decrease again. Uh, let's go another set. Dark Dragonite, first edition hollow from Team Rocket set. What a set Team Rocket is. Unbelievable. Um, that's why I got rid of the eights because that is an outlier and I'm not prepared to have that on the graph. Um, let's remove the sevens and let's see what the tens are looking like as well. Okay. So tens, there's obviously going to be less sales of them. They're, they're rarer cards. You'll see less of them get sold on the market. However, we see this jump and then we start to see this down. I know that's only four sales, but it is coming down. And the nines paint this better picture where we see this big steep increase here. And then we see a settle and then we it, on average, we're trending back down again. Uh, oh, here we go. The big hitter. Dark Charizard, first edition hollow. Oh, what a, what a monster card this is. So we see this huge spike and then look at this. PSA 9 is just free falling, free falling up from. Imagine if you'd have bought around this $3,000 price point and you're down here and within two weeks, you're losing $1,000, $1,500. $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, I mean, it's horrible. It must be horrible, but I can't say that we didn't see some of this coming. Growth like this just it isn't sustainable uh, in the short term it, it just isn't um and you know these retraces a lot of people could see coming and it's the reason why a lot of people were selling at this point you know so congrats on anyone who sold any dark charizards over the last couple of weeks um so let's go to another set again spreading our spreading our knowledge through different sets to get a better feel of the overall market and we're going to go for uh dragonite first edition hollow so let's strip these tens out let's take sixes through to ones out as well uh, PSA, wow, that is a that is a severe outlier right there. And uh, let's come to the end over here. Okay, sure. So let's let's even let's see if we can get rid of that that outlier. I wish I could remove them. That's a piece of feedback for PokemonPrice.com. We should be able to say that certain uh, listings are, are outliers. Um, but yeah, we see this this spike, like I said, through October, and then we get to the end of October, and we start to see these prices come right down again. These PSA nines. Uh, next card is oh fossil Gengar. I love this card. Again, we see these price climbs up towards the end of October, and then we're starting to see this gradual decrease again. Now, f forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but it's important that we see these patterns across the board. It really is. We can't just have it on one card, guys. It has to be across the board. Oh, here we go. Lugia Unlimited Neo Genesis Hollow, one of the best cards of all time. 
um, and that's fact. That's not my opinion. That's fact. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. It's it's not doesn't doesn't cut it for everyone. But I I love this card. But yeah, again, we can see towards the end of October, we come up and we have these spikes. And if you look around in the eights as well, eights is probably the best the best gauge here. We start to see this price um, trend down a little bit now. Now, could these just be hiccups? Yeah, that is true. That could happen. We could see things jump back up again. That is entirely possible. However. For these steep increases, and let's try and find this Charizard card again. For something like this to happen in such a short space of time, the saying of "there's not um, fire" or is it, is it "there's not fire without smoke" or "there's not smoke without fire," either either way, what, which whichever way the saying goes, the idea behind that point is that there's no, there wouldn't be this much discussion around bubbles and people talking speculation, speculative markets. People weighing in and saying, is this the time to sell? Should we be buying? People asking these questions. That wouldn't be happening if there wasn't a sense of unease around these growths. And, you know, there's definitely... The talking points are there because there's something that's there to talk about. So, I think these steady decreases, again, are signs of market retracing. And so... Whether that's the idea of like the bubble completely bursting is a complete other, you know, another story. A burst bubble is like things take a very, very long time to recover. And we're talking like bottom line, things go right down. And I think the important thing here is that we're operating in kind of micro economic markets with these cards. There's some stuff that because it's so rare or because it's so scarce, because you see it so you don't see it as often or because there's such a high demand for it aka our charizard cards those cards will be affected less and that's proven by you know if we we've looked through all of these cards and we can see retraces on all of them but then we're still seeing record sale prices for you know charizard first edition base set shadowless hollow we're still seeing base set booster boxes going for record prices and that's because we have to remember guys there's a sense of kind of Un, unparalleled rarity and uh, you know these are iconic pieces in this collectible market so you know when we look at this this is the point I made around pop reports and that's why this is really important true rarity is key here guys and just because something is scarce in a market does not necessarily mean that it's rare and what do I mean by that well we could never see dark Charizard first edition hollows on the market you know, they could be few and far between. Someone could buy up, nobody's selling. And that means that that's scarce, right? It's in scarce supply. We can't we can't find them. But that doesn't does that mean that they're rare? Well, in respect to a lot of other Charizard cards that are out in the Pokemon TCG economy, no. I mean, that isn't a rare card. Look at the pop reports. They speak for themselves. We've got almost 500 PSA 10s. We've got over 1,000 PSA 9s. You know, and this is a first edition card. The same pop reports for other cards are much, much lower. And that's where you start to see true rarity. So when you're looking to put money into these cards, or if you're looking to invest, rarity is the key. And, and the attachment around this being a true collectible item and an iconic piece is always going to carry more than something that might feel a little bit accessible and a little bit more you know, within your reach. It hurts sometimes to admit it, but just because you can afford a certain Charizard card and that it's you know that you can get it don't be blinded by that there's there's a point around that's never guaranteed to hit the same heights that other cards do because just because it's a charizard card doesn't mean it has the same rarity as another one so where does all this discussion go and what about these retraces and what do they mean do they mean bubble pops do they just mean retraces what does it all mean and i'm not going to complete content rip for rip because that's that's not what we're about here um, I will, however, point you in the direction of a fantastic channel at the moment who is doing, they're doing a lot of work and they're definitely modeling their kind of videos and the idea around, you know, the topics of conversation that they have around traditional, um, you know, investment strategies and how they track the market is definitely more akin to traditional, you know, stocks and shares tracking and uh, they've shouted out uh, Pokemon Market Cap as well before. But that is, I'm going to move over to, uh, it's Kanto Capital. Now, this is the video that you're going to want to watch um, around the Pokemon Market bubble popping. Um, and it talks about retracing. So, what that means in summary is, I'm not going to steal any of his data or the hard work that he's done because 
Um, it's fantastic, and I w again rec can't recommend enough. Go checking it out. Um, it's a really, really good video. Um, but what does that mean? Well, retrace back to the norm matches back to that stage five of the last kind of the last stage of the um, the stages of a bubble that we looked at in the uh, previous video. And that means that before here, we were seeing a fairly kind of healthy, gradual growth uh, or increase in price of a product. And when we see these sharp increases where everything jumps out and goes crazy, there has to be some kind of retrace to bring it back to the norm. So what that means is, is that where that steady growth was going before, we kind of trend back down. And what feels like a crash is basically just a return back to that trend and that healthy growth. So that's going to be it for today's video. I know it was fairly short and sweet and quite quick, but I just wanted to take a look at some cards with you guys, related back to some of the points that we made in the previous videos, kind of just have a little bit of a recap and also point you towards some really good resources and videos to kind of form your own opinion around this topic. Again, like I said, it's just awesome to open up a discussion. So if you do have any thoughts on this topic, please drop them down in the comment section below. That's going to be everything from me today, guys. Uh, the Pokemon market is still going strong, in my opinion. I'm not going anywhere, and I hope you aren't either. Keep doing the stuff that you love. This hobby's great. The cards are great. The releases that are coming out are absolutely awesome at the moment. I'm really, really looking forward to opening up some Shiny Star V on the channel. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Peace.